Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Bittencourt and I'm going to talk about complex system and risk identification. As we all know, sports injuries are a big problem because it's related to money loss and performance loss. For example, if a team has less injuries, their chance to succeed will be greater. And the average cost of a first team player in a professional team being injured for one month is calculate, calculated to be around 500,000 euros. In this sense, prevention is quite necessary. And we've been using the sequence of prevention related to establish this process. And we have here the four steps, and I'm going to talk today about the step two, which is related to risk factors identification. Traditionally, the investigation of factors that underline the occurrence of sports injuries are concentrated on a linear and unidirectional causality which we can see here in this figure. However, this approach has focus on uh, identify isolated fa factors and has led us to frustrating results. As we can see here, the last systematic review showed to us that older age and history of hamstring strain and ACL and cough injury are significant risk factors for hamstring injury. And it's important to understand here that those uh, risk factors are non-modifiable. So uh, the conclusion of this uh, systematic review showed that future studies should consider to analyze the interaction between risk factors. Risk factors. So here it will be a suggestion, suggestion like Mandy Gudja has published. So the thing is that we should try to understand the interaction between risk factors and not only in isolation. In doing that, we should, we should try to change our paradigm from reductionism to complexity, in the sense that complexity is a new approach to science, study how relationship between parts give rise to the collective behavior of a system. And it's interesting to see here the figure of reductionism which means that is the sum of the parts and the simplification of complex problem into basic units is the classical science method of analyzing uh, a problem. And complexity paradigm contributes to examining sports injuries in terms of relationship rather than factors. Therefore, we should try to be coherent coherent, and we should try to aim a coherence between scientific problem, philosophical paradigm, and methods and statistics. However, with few exceptions, we embrace the theme of complexity in a name only and fail to engage with the underlying logic. So many researchers are still using methods that assume a linear system in which predictive studies in general. So in order to achieve coherence, our research group from Brazil, led by Professor Sergio Fonseca, this guy here, in collaboration with Professor Miwiz from Canada, we've published this important paper in 2016, proposing uh, that we should try to analyze sports injury using a complex system approach, and also try to identify the web of determinants which means that it's the combination and maybe non-linear combination between different risk factors in related to a specific context. In relation to this paper now, I'll be talking about the key principles of complexity, which is non-linearity, interactions and self-organization, and also uncertainty. The first key point is interaction in sports. So interaction is a core concept in complex system um, approach, which means that we have interconnected factors in which one change may influence the other and will change the whole. So um, our research group from Brazil have been 
has been studying interaction for the last few years. And here I'm going to show you the results from Luciana Mendonça from her PhD, in which we can see here that hip range of motion in interaction with forefoot malalignment will lead to patella tendinopathy only in the presence of gluteal maxis, maximus weakness. And on the other hand, when we have a good, good gluteal maximus, they will uh, neutralize the foot malalignment and the hip malalignment, and then no injury will uh, happen. So it's also interesting to see that sometimes we make a linear infer inference related to injury in the sense that maybe forefoot, malalignment, or pronation will lead directly to patella tendinopathy. So this is a wrong way to think because um, biomechanical risk factors, also context risk factor, can interact and then will change our outcome. So to show the importance of interaction, let me give you another example. As you can see here, we have this apparently random set of points. So what is this? Can you extract the information with this set of points? Can you recognize with this uh, dots mean? So it's interesting because uh, they don't make sense in isolation. And only when we link the dots, we can see the pattern. And it's, it's beautiful how we can see the whole picture behind the connections and behind the points. So I strongly believe that linking the dots uh, will, have, uh, will help us to better understanding of sports injuries. Another key point is nonlinearity, meaning that small chains may produce a large and sometimes unexpected effect on the outcome. So for example, here in this graphic, we can see that roughly 80% of the outcome come from 20% uh, of your effort. So we have, uh, it's, the input is not proportional to the output. And also when we are saying about nonlinearity, means that maybe we should try to identify sports variables cutoff point, which means that there is critical values or threshold that may, may trigger or may not trigger interactions related to a specific injury. So also we should try to identify those specific values. And another key point is self-organization. And as we can see here in this beautiful video, sorry, <laughs> we can see he flocked here, flocking of birds, uh, and uh, it's interesting to see that it's absence of central control regulating the process, and also local dynamics influence system global behavior. So it's quite beautiful to see how they can self-organize. These uh, emergent pro properties are the result of a process called uh, self-organization, which is governed by universal law. These universal laws or rules enable self-organization, creating spontaneous occurrence of order with the system. So it's, it's a way to find order from chaos. So as we can see here, the birds, we have three simple rules and to build a prediction model of how the flocks of birds behaves, it's necessary to find the simple rules. So maybe here it's a clue and um, which could help us to find um, sports rules. What are the rules related to the interactions between biomechanical risk factors or social risk factors and physical risk factors? So we must try to identify in the sense that, for example, maybe uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical energy flow will be one rule and we need to think about different rules. So here, um, I'm, I'm trying to show to you that we should move in from risk factors to injury pattern recognition. So it's the pathway that we should uh, exercise in our mind is a different mindset. So at the beginning we should we, we were able to identify risk factor but now since we have the web of determinants it's a way to think 
risk profile in a way that we can see the combinations between the risk factors. And doing that, maybe we can change our frustrating findings. So also, it's interesting to see when we um, uh, look closer at the figure, the connections make the variables become hubs. So uh, fatigue, muscle, uh, previous muscle injury and strength qualities would be hubs. So it's not only the interaction, but the strength uh, of the interactions between those. Therefore, it's not only the specific characteristics, characteristics of factor that make, make it important, but how many interactions the, fact, the factor has and how it is strength of the interactions. Like in social media, the digital influencers are hubs. So it's interesting, funny to see that. So because their action will be pro propagated through the web easily. So from a network, social network perspective, you could be an important person, but only if you, uh, but if you don't have connections, you are not a hub. So it's funny to see, and maybe we can use the idea of social network in order to identify our hubs in uh, sports injury and maybe try to find the injury influencers. <laughs> so, uh, for example, previous muscle injury, injury has negative impact in different systems, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal and psychological aspects. Likewise, fatigue is influenced by internal and external workload, which in turn are connected to the season schedule, for example here, season schedule, and also recovery. In addition, we all know that all these factors and connection will change over the season. This is why pattern recognition, find simple rules and audit behind the connections could help us to uncover the complexity behind sports injuries. So we have a challenge in football, and what will be the risk profile of muscle injuries in football, for example? So in 2018, Alan uh, McCall gave me uh, an interesting challenge and he gave me this list of risk factors related to the top three. And he asked me to build the, the, the web of determinants related to muscle injury. So we published that in the Barcelona guidelines. So I'm really proud and humbled to be part of that team. And uh, of course, this is a theoretical web of determinants. And now, during my postdoc, I'm trying to uh, develop the methods behind the web and how can we achieve this web using machine learning, for example. And also, it's important to highlight that when we have uh, the complexity background and approach, it means that the same injury could have different pathways. So probably when we think about the web of determinants, we won't have just one web. Maybe we'll have different combinations between risk factors because we'll depend on the sports and of course related to the context. So it's uh, quite interesting uh, this example because uh, for example, dynamic knee valgus in this web will, have, will be a hub, for example. But on the other hand, in ballet, dynamic knee valgus, it's not a hub anymore because fatigue could be a hub and uh, relevant risk factors, risk factor, sorry. And uh, if I could give, give you um, a practical example or a hypothesis using uh, daily base uh, data or daily base variables that are uh, collected by elite football teams, uh, we can see here possible combinations for muscle injuries. So, for example, if an athlete has a low eccentric capacity in combination with hip range of motion asymmetry in screening, and uh, will be this athlete could be exposure to random load distribution. So, the combination between screening and load distribution could lead, for example, to a muscle injury. So it's quite interesting to think that there is a multidimensional combination between those factors. 
finally, if I want to do risk assessment, which will give me the opportunity to do risk management all over the season, our goal is to support coaches and health staff to make better decisions during season. And of course, take NASH action and try to do some prevention uh, intervention related to a specific um, uh, risk group. So in this sense, I would like to develop like this risk matrix. So after screening, maybe we should, should have an algorithm that could calculate the risk score and give the information to the coach uh, using colors, for example. So I really think we should try to aim this in the sense that uh, we should communicate better with, the, with coach and health, health uh, professionals. So I'm finished my presentation and I would like to give you this uh, quote. Uh, in order to embrace complexity, it's time to think, to think differently. And as researchers, clini clinicians and lifelong learners, we need to develop a systems mindset, which is, I think it's awesome, that recognizes changing interrelationship between parts of the system and, of course, adapts to unexpected changes. Thank you so much, and we you can reach me through those uh, social media and uh, and of course using my email too. Thank you so much, and have an awesome online meeting.